Okay, in this video, I'm going to be talking to you about alkanes, alkanes, and alkynes, and this video is going to be focused on how we name them. We need a special naming system for organic compounds because we can have compounds that have the same number of atoms, and they can be very different. So, for example, C3H could, C3H4 could be this, where we have two double bonds between the three carbons and the four hydrogens appropriately, or it could take this form. Where we have one triple bond, and then we have three hydrogens on one carbon and one hydrogen on the other. And these two compounds would have substantially different properties as well, both physical and chemical, right? One has a triple bond, one has two double bonds, so they're gonna behave differently, so we need different names for them. So simply calling this tricarbon tetra hydride, using our prefix naming system for two non-metals, isn't going to work. So we need something more substantial. These, by the way, when we have a molecule that has the same number of each type of atom but turns into a different molecule, these are called isomers. Same number of each type of atom but different structures. Okay, so how do we go ahead and name these things? Well, we're going to start with the simplest thing, just, a cha just chains of carbon atoms and hydrogen atoms, and we're going to talk about what the simplest, what they look like if they have double bonds, and what they look like if they have triple bonds in this video. As you're going to see in subsequent videos, we can add oxygen or other halogens, and we can get a whole variety of things with a whole variety of names. But right now, we're trying to start and establish the basics. The first thing is we're going to use one of these prefixes to tell us how many carbons are in the chain. So one is going to be meth, two, at three, pro. You can read the chart there. But that tells us the number of carbons. So if you see up here, we've got two examples that both have three um, carbons. So the, these two examples would both have the prefix prop. Um, if I say had C, 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 and these chains can go on, I mean, basically as long as you can imagine. You'll notice when I'm drawing these molecules, I seem to go pretty quickly and I don't think too much about how many hydrogens to put on or how many, how to do that. And the rule that I'm using there that I'm not mentioning is that each hydrogen forms one bond and each carbon forms four bonds. If you remember, carbon has four valence electrons. So if we imagine there are four spots to form bonds, in these organic compounds, carbon is always going to be forming four bonds. Okay, so this one has one, two, three, four, five carbon atoms, and that makes it pent. The secondary thing that we're going to do is we're going to choose an ending. Our endings always depend on our functional group. That's like if there's anything interesting or different happening in the molecule besides a simple carbon chain. So the simplest option here is that nothing interesting is happening in the molecule. Here you see we have all single bonds, we don't have any oxygens, we don't have anything funny going on at all, and when that's the case, we use the suffix ane. So this compound would be pent ane. The simplest five carbon um, string of atoms that you can have, a five carbon chain that you can have. If we put a double bond in there, like this, notice here that I'm filling out these carbons with four bonds each, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Here I have a three carbon chain, so I'm dealing with 
perp, and because I have a double bond, I'm going to change my ending to ene. So this would be propene. And we can still have triple bonds. So if I go over here, two, three, oh, carbon, 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 just to make it different. I notice that three, four bonds, three, four bonds, one, two, three, four bonds, one, two, three, four. So that's how many hydrogens this gets. And this is a one, two, three, four long carbon chain. That's but. So this would be butyne. Okay. But we need to be careful with this. There's an added problem here. And that specifically is that that triple bond could be located in different places. And while these two molecules would be very similar, they do have substantially different properties such that we need to name them properly. So we need a way of telling the difference between that and this. So the obvious difference here being the triple bond is now in the middle of the molecule instead of on the side. So the way we can do that is we number the location of the triple bond. If there's any chance it could be anywhere else, we specify the number. We always try to keep numbers when specifying as low as possible. So I would call that one carbon one, two, three, four. So I could call this one one butyne. Notice I put the number out in front of the entire molecule. I separate numbers and letters with dashes, okay? Or I can put the number right in front of the suffix and I could call this one but two line. Sometimes it's nice to have the number right next to the thing that it refers to, especially when we start having molecules that will have more than one type of functional group or more than one thing going on with them. Two is the lowest number I can get here because if I go from this side, we can see that the triple bond is two. Or if I go from this side, I can see that the triple bond is two. So you're stuck with two as the lowest number you can use to specify the location of that. And now we can see that these two molecules, which are very, very similar, we can specify the difference between as long as we use our naming system properly. So we do need to indicate the location of the double bond or triple bond. We don't if there's only one place for it. See, this, there's no such thing as two propene, no matter if the double bond had been here, you would have just counted from this end. So because that double bond can only go in one location, I don't have to call this one propene because they don't need to specify. There aren't other possible options. This is the only option. But if the double bond can exist in multiple different locations, we indicate its location. We um, put it either in front of the name or the suffix and we keep the numbers, bleh, what happened there? We keep the numbers as low as possible. Okay, the last thing I wanna talk about here, it, actually, sorry, two more things. We can have multiple double bonds. We need to know how to deal with that. So let's look at this guy. Again, filling him out with hydrogens, knowing that each one of these carbons is forming four bonds. So notice we have one, two double bonds in this location. Okay. So I know that this is but, and the way that I specify multiple um, double bonds is I can use the prefixes. And ironically here, we go back to the prefix system that we used for um, covalent molecules. So di is two, tri is three. We can have tetra at four. We don't, um, there's no mono. So we never specify if it's just one. If it's just one, we just ignore it. So this would be but, but to, to recognize that it has one, two double bonds, we would change it to but diene. Now we also need to specify the location of those double bonds because this one could have been here, which would make it a different molecule. So I'm going to give them both numbers and I want to make sure with my numbers that I keep the numbers as low as possible. So, you know, typically, in uh, English, we read right to left. 
So we would normally think of this as the start. But when we're doing these molecules, we need to be more flexible and realize that this molecule is just drawn this way, but it's free to rotate in space. And when you encounter it, it might be in the other direction. So really, there's no reason to think of this as the start. We can start at either end, whichever end leaves us with the lowest numbers. So here, one, two. If I start at this end, I would call this one, two. Notice numbers are separated by commas, and letters and numbers are separated by dashes. So numbers are commas, letters and numbers are dashes, and there's no separation between letters. So I could call this 1, 2, butadiene, saying that the first double bond is on 1, the second double bond is on 2, but, because there's four carbons, diene, saying two double bonds, or but, dash, 1, 2, diene. Either of these names would be acceptable for this molecule.